Thank you. I'll have to admit I'm battling some nerves tonight, so we're going to take a little time and see how that works out. There's a saying that they say that, you know, practice makes perfect. So in case you're wondering, that's what I'm doing up here tonight, getting a little practice in. Um, one of these days I'll be able to pull it off, I think. But for now, we're getting some practice in. I don't have a, a PowerPoint tonight. I apologize for that. I didn't, didn't get around to that. So there's no distractions for you tonight, just me up here. But I got a title for the lesson tonight. I called it Running for Christ. If you want to turn to your Bibles, we're going to read a scripture. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. First Corinthians 9 and 24. Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. A few months ago, I started, you know, a new hobby, maybe, if you will. I decided I was going to start running. Um, and I turned 30 a few months ago. I thought, you know, it's time for some changes. We're going to do something, maybe, you know, get in a little better shape, be a little more healthy. So we'll start running. So I've been running for the last several months, and I'm thinking, you know, what a perfect time to come up with a lesson. You know, if you've ever run, it's pretty boring. There's not much you can do. Music helps a little bit, but you really have a lot of time to think, and a lot of time with, there's, you know, not much on your mind. So I've been running the last several weeks thinking, you know, what can I talk about for this lesson? So, well, naturally, I thought, well, let's talk about running for Christ. Sound like a perfect match. Um, there's some parallels that I thought, you know, this would work out really well. A few years ago, we did a, a vacation Bible school down in Beaver. And we use this verse in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Um, Run in such a way that you may win. And we got VBS coming up this week, so I thought, you know, this kind of ties together real nice. Um, but to start off with, as a runner, when you run, um, there's different things that you need to do to be successful. Um, first of all, you have to start running. And for some people, that's, that's one of the hardest steps. For me, it was one. Um, there's things you can do, like make a schedule, have a plan. You know, you've got to be dedicated. Um, there's times where you may not want to do it. You've got to have the motivation. And I think there's some parallels that I can pull out that, you know, running for Christ, there's things we need to do when we want to be a runner for Christ. Um, I'm going to do some steps tonight. We've all heard them. Probably we grew up with them. I'm just going to review them tonight, though, because I think that um, we can still get some good out of them. And it's good to refresh him. So to be a runner for Christ, the first thing you have to do is you have to hear. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10 and 17. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we all know that the first step of this is we have to hear. Um, that's a big step for us as Christians because it's our job to tell people about the gospel so that they can hear. We're supposed to you know, go out and preach the gospel so that everybody can hear the message. And that's where it all starts, and that's the first step. And I've often wondered, you know, what about the people that don't hear the word of God? You know, we hear about um, tribes in the Amazon rainforest who are very prim primitive away from civilization, and you have to wonder, you know, what happens if someone doesn't hear? Um, I don't know, I've got an answer for that tonight, but just something that's interesting. You know, the first step, you have to hear the word. Second step, as we all probably know, you have to believe the word. Um, if you want to turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. And verse 6. And without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So the second step we have to believe. And I think this is something that, you know, we grow up here in these steps and we may not sometimes really stop and think about the importance of these and what they really mean. Um, do people really believe in the Bible? 
do they really believe in God? You know, the statistics, the studies may tell you that we live in a godly nation, that people do believe in God. But if you really look around, I think sometimes we maybe have to question that. If we look at our politicians, politicians, and the things they do and the things they say, do we believe in God as a nation? If we look at our school boards around the country and the things they say and the things they do, do we really believe in the Bible? And do we really believe in God you know, as a nation? Does God exist? That may ring a bell. We recently, last year, had a seminar. You know, does God exist? We're surrounded by a society and a country that is starting to tell us, I think, more and more that maybe we don't believe in the Bible and maybe we don't believe in God because the things that we do and the things that we say are starting to lean that way. So while it seems like an easy step, I think it's important that we look at this. You know, you have to believe, and that's the second step. The third step is you have to repent. Uh, go to a, a, a verse that we all know probably pretty well, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts 2 and 38. And Peter said to them, Repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And another verse I'd like to read, found over in Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, and we're going to read uh, verses 1 through 5. Now on the same occasion, there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans, whose blood pirate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or do you suppose that those eighteen on those on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse culprits than all the men who live in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And I think this is another step where we run into issues sometimes. We think, okay, what does it mean to repent? Well, first of all, we have to realize we've done something wrong. Um, for some people, you know, it's hard to admit sometimes that you've done something wrong. It's hard to tell someone that you have, in fact, wronged them. And I think some people struggle to realize that they can't do it on their own. That in fact, that no matter what they do, they do need God in their life. And that repenting is necessary. The next step, you have to confess. We're going to find a verse in Matthew 10, verse 32. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. You know, another vital step to becoming a Christian, to being a runner, runner for Christ, is we have to confess him. If you've ever noticed a baptism here, we usually have right down here in front, before we get baptized, we have a confession. Um, confessing that you believe that um, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and it's through Him that you have remission to sin. The next step is you have to be baptized. Again, back in Acts 2 and 38, it talks about baptism. We're also going to go to Matthew 28 and verse 18. You want to turn there to Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So then once we get baptized, we have one more step, which I think some people forget about sometimes. We take for granted, and that step is staying faithful. 
We're going to read a verse real quick about that in Matthew 10 and 22. Matthew 10 and 22. And you will be hated by all on account of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. So basically just talking about enduring, staying faithful, staying true to God's word. And that's something that we have to remember. Um, I think some people will tell you that once you're baptized, you're saved. And they forget that there's a little more to it. Um, that's really the hard part is we still have to stay faithful. We still have to do the things that he has called us to do in order to be saved. So now that we've talked about what it takes, what it means to be a runner for Christ, the next thing I want to talk about is some obstacles. Obviously, like I said, when you run physically, there's obstacles that may come in your way. Um, whether you get injured maybe, you lose motivation, um, you just get too busy, and it becomes hard sometimes to stay focused. I think likewise, running for Christ sometimes, there's things that get in our way and bring us down. I'm going to read a, a few different verses. First one in 1 John chapter 2. First John 2 and verse 15. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then we're going to go over to James 4 and verse 4. James 4, 4. You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And one last verse, we've got Romans 12. We're going to do Romans 12, 1 through 3. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is in your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to every man among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God allotted to each a measure of faith. So in each of these, these verses, we see that the world is going to try to bring us down. Um, there's many things in our world this day, we talked about a little bit earlier, um, people trying to tell us that God isn't necessary and that God maybe shouldn't be in our lives. And there's just a lot of things, I'm calling them obstacles, that the world is going to place in front of us that keeps us from running for Christ. Another thing is time. If you want to turn over to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And this is another thing in our day and time, this society that we live in, it seems like there's never enough time to do anything. We're always going here, going there, there's so many things that we have to do, and it seems like sometimes that we just need a little more time. You know, I remember sorry, I wasn't ready for this tonight. I remember my grandpa always saying, you know, he'll sleep when he gets old. Funny thing is though, he's 80 years old and he, he's still going. So I don't know when old is, but there's never enough time. And something as Christians is sometimes we put other things ahead of God. You know, we're all here tonight, but there's some of us that didn't make it tonight. 
obviously, you know, something come up. We don't know what. I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody, but sometimes we feel like we don't have enough time. And sometimes God is what suffers when we don't have enough time. Another verse, another obstacle that we come into, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. First Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. It may sound a little counterintuitive, but sometimes our friends could be our worst enemies. And when it comes to being a Christian, sometimes those people that should be closest to us do the least as far as our spirituality is concerned. And it seems like maybe they need to, it seems like sometimes maybe they hurt us a lot. Um, so those are just some obstacles I think of as far as running for Christ that we really have to pay attention to. We can't let the world keep us down. Um, it gets hard sometimes. But we have to stay faithful and true to God's word. Time is an issue. You know, of course, everybody here tonight knows how important it is to be here. We've got a VBS coming up this week, which has taken a lot of time to prepare and to plan. And of course, the actual VBS. And then of course, friends sometimes can be an obstacle. But with th through all these obstacles, there's something that we have to keep in mind and that running for Christ, there's a great reward that is waiting for us. And obviously physically when you run, you get in better shape, maybe you'll be healthier, and all the things that come along with that. But being a runner for Christ, you receive the greatest reward possible, and that is that you will have a home in heaven someday. And not only that, but to be an example to those people around you, to bring other people to Christ, and to teach people about His Word can be quite uplifting. I remember one time a few years back we were doing a vacation Bible school in Beaver um, teaching third and fourth graders and in Beaver there's a couple of churches but really there's just the Baptist church you've got the Baptist church and then you've got all the others so one of the girls in my classroom her father was a preacher at the Baptist church and second or third day of the, the VBS we'd had um, just very excited always positive and upbeat and she proclaimed out of the class that she couldn't wait till next year so that she'd come back to our VBS. And that's something that as me, it just kind of stuck with me for quite a while that, just that feeling that maybe what I'm doing is helping somebody else, maybe someone else, even if it's not now, but down the road, we'll be able to get something out of that. Lastly tonight, as a runner, there's one thing that can be very important and that's staying hydrated. It's something that if you don't do, you can actually die. So as you run, having water is something that is very important. And as a Christian running for Christ, without water, we can't do it. Without baptism, our sins can't be forgiven, and we have no hope in, of heaven. So we have the water behind us this evening, we have the opportunity. If you have any needs, if you haven't been baptized, we went over some of the steps that to be a runner for Christ that you need to do. So if you have any needs, um, come forward as we stand and sing.